Well, good morning and welcome to our Sunday School. I'm glad you're able to join us this morning. Uh, happy early Merry Christmas. Uh, and uh, if you've got your Bibles, we're in uh, the Gospel of Mark this morning. And uh, this morning's a little different, uh, so we're going to look to try to do a review of what we've learned so far in Mark's Gospel. And the primary driver for today's lesson is going to be you. So uh, what I plan to do is to share the section headings. For those of you that don't have the handout, if you'd like a handout, you can go to OurSundaySchool.com and you can grab a handout for today's lesson. Uh, but what the handout has are all of the section headers for the ESV's translation of the first uh, 10 and a half or so chapters of Mark's Gospel. And uh, this is just meant to be a reminder of the things that we've studied so far. And uh, we're just going to spend the entire time today answering the question, what is God doing in you through his word from the portion of Mark we've studied so far? So what is God doing in you through his word from the portion of Mark that we have studied so far? So while you're thinking about those answers, uh, I'll tell you that there are two ways to get your answers to me this morning. So you can uh, comment in the Facebook uh, uh, video that's going right now, or you can shoot me a text, and uh, my number is 423-394-2675. That's 423-394-2675. <clears throat> All right, so let's greet some folks this morning. So uh, Julie and Caleb are on the couch. Hey, guys, good morning. Uh, the Arnolds, the Millers, we've got Bobby, Nancy, Jessica in the living room. Fantastic. Merry Christmas. Uh, Danus and Brittany are in room 206. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the Barbers are here with two exclamation points, right? So uh, the Velosons, hey Amy, Merry Christmas. Uh, the Johnsons and the Landers, wonderful, fantastic. All right, so again, if you want a handout, you can go to OurSundaySchool.com, grab a handout for this morning's lesson. And this morning we are answering the question, what is God doing in you through his word from the portion of Mark we've studied so far? So the way I'd like to kind of arrange this, if we'll all just kind of flip back over to Mark chapter 1, uh, to Mark chapter 1. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Yep, here we go. So there's the uh, section headers for Mark's Gospel for chapter 1. And there went my pen. So <clears throat> I'm good. Thanks. Don't both get up at the same time. That's right. Neither of them flinched at all. So there's that. Somewhere Dave Barber is dying that he can't get my pen for me right now. So thank you, Dave. I love you. Julie's going to throw one at me, so that's fantastic. <laughs> hey, Barry, good morning. All right, so we started off with the gospel according to Mark. The uh, first section there is John the Baptist prepares the way. So this is the, uh, the introduction of Jesus, if you will. If you, if you think about, you know, how, how would you introduce Jesus Christ? Uh, and John does it, uses, you, John does it using... Uh, Old Testament language, uh, which is a great way to do that because the Old Testament uh, tells about the coming of Jesus of Christ. Then we move into the baptism of Jesus, the temptation of Jesus. Jesus begins his ministry. Uh, he calls those first disciples. Um, he heals a man. We see this, this man with the unclean spirit, the first of, of many. <laughs> then Jesus heals many. Uh, and then he preaches, and then he cleanses a leper. So if you if you remember back to Mark chapter 1, this would have been uh, January, February of 2019. Uh, Mark chapter 1 is a really good summary of what is to come, right? How he engages with his disciples, how he is introduced, how he travels, how he uh, engages with individuals. Uh, and we see this over and over and over again. So I'm just going to give you a second to flip through Mark chapter 1 and uh, either text or comment in Facebook and let me know what God's doing in you through his word. Uh, from the portion of Mark we've studied so far.
right, so I got a couple texts here. <clears throat> so it's from uh, Jessica Miller. So given me a greater hunger to know him intimately. Amen to that. That's wonderful. And then uh, giving me more confidence in the audit ability. Two words. I like that phrase. Uh, of his word, it stands firm. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It stands firm. Uh, one of the reasons that Mark includes some details that he does is to be able to reference back to those people who were still alive when Mark wrote his gospel, probably in the early 50s or so, um, many of whom would have been just you know, 20, 25 years removed from the events that happened. So they still would have been around, they still would have remembered what was going on, would have been trusty eye eyewitnesses to, to the accounts that Mark was, uh, that was writing here. So Mark, he's got uh, love that the leopard kneeled, so toward the end of Oops, wrong section. There we go. Verse 40, the leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, if you will, you can make me clean. Oh, yeah, that must have been an effort and very painful, absolutely. Leprosy is not, uh, not a kind disease. It's, a, it's an exceedingly painful thing. And then what does Jesus do, right? He reaches out and he touches him. He doesn't become unclean because he touches this leper. Not because the, you know, the Old Testament law didn't apply to him somehow. Uh, is that God is holy and uh, is unable to be unclean. It says, I will be clean. What a beautiful picture. What a beautiful picture. Humility takes sacrifice. Yes, it does. It absolutely does, which is a, a beautiful picture of how, um, how Jesus engages throughout his entire ministry. You know, the text here from Mitch, I'm struck that Jesus calls the ordinary man to himself. Amen to that, right? Aren't we thankful that we don't have to be some kind of super Christian for Jesus to be interested or engaged or calling out to us? Um, we don't have to be special or accomplished to come to him. Yeah, I mean, the, the disciples he chooses are just a bunch of misfit toys, right? I mean, they're just all over the place and a mess. And, you know, we're ten and a half chapters into Mark. They're still a mess. We're, we're going to get to the end of Mark chapter 16 they're still going to be a mess, <laughs> right? You're going to read through the, uh, the book of the Acts of the Apostles and you're going to see them doing really silly, stupid things from time to time and uh, still mixing it up and messing it up. So absolutely, absolutely. All right, so go to Mark chapter 2. So Mark chapter 2. So a couple of section headings in Mark chapter 2. So Jesus heals uh, a paralytic, right? So this is the uh, man that they uh, took the roof off and uh, lowered him down. He calls Matthew. Uh, he answers a question about the fasting that comes from the Pharisees, right? So the Pharisees enter stage left and begin their uh, almost nonstop barrage of uh, attack on Jesus. Uh, he talks about the Sabbath and who it was made for and who it was made by. So what are our observations? What did we, what did we pick up there? Uh, and yes, Dave, that's exactly right. We are still a mess today. So Mark chapter 2. And so a comment here from Jessica about the paralytic. Sometimes I'm the paralytic that and need to be carried. Yes, ain't that the truth? And sometimes I'm the friend who needs to do the carrying. Uh, there is need and beauty in both. Yes, there is. Absolutely. Beautiful observation. And the Savior is there for both, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I've 
always been struck with uh, how Jesus calls Matthew. He just <laughs> walks up to him and says, follow me. And he just gets up and follows him. Right? you got to love that kind of um, just immediate obedience. Uh, it is not, however, indicative of the immediate obedience that uh, we would expect from the disciples later on, but you know, it, he, he does uh, get an A for effort there. All right, Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Uh, so we've got Jesus talking uh, to the man with the withered hand. I um, heard Bob Goff talk about this one time. It was a beautiful story. So a, a great crowd uh, follows Jesus. Um, he calls all of the apostles, right? So he rounds out the 12, uh, talks about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And then uh, we address Jesus' uh, own uh, biological family, his mother and his brothers. <clears throat> Insights on to chapter 3. So I hear one from Josh. So Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Yes, he is. Uh, Josh, one of the things I love about you, brother, is that you will clearly state the truth and then describe what you're going to go talk about. So, well done. I uh, love how he starts tearing down the traditions that were man-centered and not God-centered. Yes, absolutely. Um, Jesus was ruthless in his attack on the garbage that had been stacked on top of the holiness of his word and um, just tore down and tore down and tore down and, and in a beautiful way so that we could then see clearly the glory and the beauty and the majesty of the holiness of God because um, all that junk just gets in the way. So Mark chapter 3. Eric, I'm not sure if that's your hot chocolate or coffee, uh, but I'm glad you're enjoying something, so cool. Julie just rolled her eyes at me for that one, so sorry about that. Uh, give Jesus, so this is from Jessica, give Jesus your undesirable parts, quote from Darla, yes, right? He can use <laughs> anything, right? So it's one of the beautiful things that you can, if you just want to read through the, script, the uh, Gospels, and just look at all the different things that Jesus used, all the different types of people, all the different objects, all the different uh, metaphors and analogies. Uh, he can use anything, um, absolutely anything. It's beautiful. All right, Mark chapter 4 then. We've got the parable of the sower, or really maybe the parable of the soils. Uh, the purpose of parables. Boy, we spent a while there. Uh, a lamp under a basket. The parable of the seed growing. The parable of the mustard seed. And then Jesus calms a storm. Which I always thought was an odd way to end that chapter, but it all happens on the same day. So, yeah. Some of this is, some of the chapters are divided up by uh, geography. Some of the chapters are divided up by uh, chronology. Um. <clears throat> ah, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> ah, thanks, Bart. Thanks, Dave. Mark chapter 4. This is what happens when I have a whole bunch of slides now, right? This is. <laughs> I forget to switch them. This from Jessica in class. You reminded me to put down the shovel. Let God do the work. Okay. That sounds insightful. I don't know that I remember that, but awesome. <laughs> uh, Amy V, he displays his authority. Oh, yes, he does. Which is still on display today. It should not be ignored. Oh, no, it shouldn't. Yeah, his, um, his authority over everything that he has created, um, just so, so good. 
Uh, th these are my notes from uh, the lesson that Mitch taught <laughs> on uh, sorry, put it over here uh, on the uh, Sea of Galilee. The the uh, when Jesus calmed the storm. Such a good lesson. Oh my goodness. I'm still seasick from watching that video of that boat crashing up and down on the waves. So it's just craziness, Mitch. All right, anything else on Mark chapter 4? I, I do remember when uh, we were going through this, uh, Brian simultaneously was teaching a series uh, on the parables of Jesus. And he did this. Uh, he started a series several weeks before we got to Mark chapter 4, and I was so incredibly grateful that God allowed me to go learn and see this larger perspective on parables before there was an expectation that I would teach on this particular text. So it was a, um, I do remember how God provided in his timing on this, and then he was just very gracious towards your Sunday school teacher to uh, help me understand all right, Mark chapter 5, only two section headings. Now that Dave's reminded me, I'm thinking about it. It's so only two section headings for Mark chapter 5. So Jesus heals a man with a demon, and he just heals a, a woman and Jairus' uh, daughter. But so much going on there. Uh, more displays of his authority, I would argue. So Mark chapter 5. Again, you can comment in the Facebook group. Or in the Facebook post, or you can uh, send me a text at Healing, wow. He is caring and loving with all involved. Why would I think he would handle me any differently? Such comfort. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah, one of the things that we forget is that you know, what, what Jesus is doing is he is showing us who God is. He is showing us how God engages with his creation. Um, this is not some aberration or some oddity. This is this is normal work for God. Um, so Jessica here, Jesus is for everyone, the low, the unclean, and those in the synagogue. Yes, that's exactly right. Those who think that they are high and mighty and those who are not. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Jesus doesn't care about cultural norms. He cares about people. Ain't that the truth? And aren't we glad about that? Josh here says, uh, who touched my garments? Rhetorical questions for the group's knowledge, not his own. That's exactly right. Because right? he knows all. Always thinking of others and teaching while healing. Multi-level stuff. Yes, it's crazy difficult. I cannot. It's just it's difficult to wrap your head around how you can be doing all of this and being an example in all of this at the exact same time, right? Truly incredible stuff. So Mark chapter... Uh, six, then, Mark chapter six. So we've got Jesus' uh, rejection at Nazareth. Uh, again, a little foreshadowing as, of what is to come. Uh, he sends out the 12 apostles. Right? Go, go and do this work that I have commissioned you to go do and then come back and we'll, we'll recap and see <laughs> how this went. Uh, then we come to the tragedy of the death of John the Baptist. Uh, we see this just exceedingly weak, self-centered, arrogant, prideful, lying leader in Herod um, and how he engages with uh, his brothers. Why? I mean, it's just, it's just a, it's a whole 
It's a whole mess of a story there, right? Uh, and then we follow that up with Jesus feeding the 5,000, Jesus walking on water, uh, healing the sick in Gennesaret. Uh, he just is all in all the time. So this comment from Sherry, uh, demons know who Jesus is all the time. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do, absolutely. I want to live in that knowledge too. Amen to that, that we not forget or be ignorant of who Christ is and how he is engaging with us and in the world. <clears throat> amen, amen. Yes, Margie, Jesus knew the need for rest. I was literally just looking at the, the beginning of uh, the section on Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles returned to Jesus and told them that all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. Right? It was not just, it, 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 was a, it was a busy pace at times, but it wasn't nonstop busy. Right? There was a, a demonstration that God gave to us in the first chapter of Genesis about work and then rest and then work and then rest. There's this pattern, this cycle built into uh, creation. And uh, Jesus not only knows this, but exhibits this with his disciples and, and helps them to get into this pattern of rest as well. So this comment from Jessica, we should meet the physical needs as we try and share about spiritual needs of people. Yes, it is hard to tell somebody about somebody that's hungry about Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. These are challenging things. So Mark chapter uh, 7, continue with your comment there, Josh. Uh, Mark chapter 7, so we've got, uh, I see all the little dots. It's fantastic. I should have worn my dots shirt today. That would have been more appropriate. Uh, traditions and commandments. So again, we come back to the Pharisees and we, we deal with that. We talk about what defiles a person uh, from within, not from without. That beautiful lesson that Amy taught on Mother's Day of all days, right? Again, sorry for that, Amy. Uh, the Syrophoenician woman's faith. Uh, we got uh, in Jesus healing a deaf man. Um, yeah, Jesus tells them in chapter 6, he tells the disciples, Josh, you give them something to eat, right? <laughs> Quickly showed their inability and their insufficiency uh, without him. Uh, and he always provides, yes, Jessica, all uh, for all those needs. That's exactly right. So Amy here, so he heals us, he cleans us, he loves us and stands for us. Merry Christmas indeed. Amen and amen. You guys came loaded this morning. I love it. <laughs> I was talking to Julie and Kayla before we got started this morning, and I said, why do you guys think we should do this this morning? I said, I've got half a dozen different thoughts and um, didn't even have to go to plan B. So, cool. He heals us, he cleans us, he loves us and stands for us. Oh, I like that. You should put that on a t-shirt, Amy. Is there anything else in chapter 7? For me, chapter 7 was about pronouncing words I wasn't used to. Uh, so, Corbin and Ephatha, right? You remember that one? With my sticky notes, okay to cheat when you're reading the Bible. And then that verse 37 that just sums up that chapter so well. They were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. Yes, He has. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. He has done all things well. He didn't do most things okay. He didn't do most things well. 
He didn't do all things mediocre. He did all things well. Um, totally and completely different from us. Yeah, so this from Jessica. Jesus shows us how to use the scriptures word for word. Direct quote. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, chapter 8. We come to uh, more hungry people. So he's going to feed uh, 4,000 this time. Uh, he looks, uh, the Pharisees come up demanding a sign. Uh, this is my favorite Marty Leslie quote, I think. So no sign for you. <laughs> uh, they demand a sign. But Jesus talks about the leaven uh, of the Pharisees and of Herod. Um, you know, this danger of engaging in religious uh, superficiality or uh, political alignment so that this becomes our God, right? Um, he heals this blind man at Bethsaida. And then uh, Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ. And then we begin this massive transition in Mark's gospel with Jesus foretelling his death and his resurrection. Mark eight thirty one. You could almost put uh, all of Mark on a, uh, a, a like a, a fulcrum, and everything turns at eight thirty one because he begins to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. He tells them what's next. So much in Mark chapter eight. Some of you are going to laugh, and some of you are going to be like, "Oh my goodness, I'm glad you didn't do it." But I felt like we could have spent a good solid six months in Mark chapter eight. There's that much going on. Um, so much of our king displaying more and more and more of who he is and what he was doing and what he was about and what he was not about. Um, everything from how to address those that were false seekers um, all the way through just this clear description of this is the Messiah because he's doing things that only the Messiah can do. Right. Jessica says here, I was encouraged that the disciples didn't get it. Yes, that's right. Uh, it gives me hope for all the times that I don't get it either. Tell me about it, Jessica. Oh, my goodness. I've gone back and I have, I, I listened to probably a third, uh, about half to a third of the lessons that I teach. And I'm, I'm mindful of the portions of Scripture that I kind of gloss over pretty quick. Uh, and in case you're wondering, uh, are there parts of Mark that I don't understand, just go back and listen to the series. And if it feels like I'm moving quickly through a certain part of the text, you know, then I don't really understand it that well. It's okay, right? We all, we're all there. All right, Mark chapter 9 then. So then we begin to really get explicit about Jesus' um, uh, you know, this foretelling of his death and his resurrection, but this transfiguration, um, <clears throat> when things literally change. Uh, Jesus heals the boy with an unclean spirit. Uh, this, again, foretelling his death and resurrection, this answering this question amongst the disciples, who is the greatest? Uh, this answer for John, anyone not against us is for us. Uh, and then temptations to sin. Probably some of the most blunt language uh, that we have in Mark's gospel. So observations about Jesus on, in Mark chapter 9. I don't know if you're keeping track of Mark's use of the phrase son of man, uh, but at the end of chapter 8 and through chapter 9, it picks up dramatically. 
<clears throat> this has been one of my observations is how how Mark uh, begins to adjust and adapt the language that he's using as he moves through. Uh, Jessica, yeah, I reminded that a lack of faith can manifest itself through lack of prayer. That's exactly right. Yeah, this is uh, verse 29, and he said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Yeah. There's a reason they didn't have the ability to do this. And then we come to Mark chapter 10, uh, and I've kind of uh, just got those first two sections up there, his teachings about divorce, and then let the children come to me. So Mark chapter 10. Yes, Margie, kids matter. That's exactly right. Because we all are them. <laughs> Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Verse 14, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Yes, kids matter. Yeah, the kingdom of God, Jessica, looks like people having access to God. That's right. That's exactly right. So uh, a good review this morning of Mark's gospel. Um, one of the things that I, I very intentionally tried to do when we started Mark's gospel was to give you a sheet of paper. If you go back, it's, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. In week one's handout, this was page number three. And uh, it literally is just all of the section headers in uh, the Gospel of Mark all the way through. And I, I like to think about um, sections of the Bible as we study a, a kind of get in depth on a particular book. I like to think about sections as opposed to chapters because uh, <clears throat> the chapters can be arbitrary sometimes and when they start and when they stop, but the sections can be very helpful for remembering the sequence of things as we move through uh, a specific book. So uh, a couple of things and we'll close. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was great. I so appreciate your engagement. Um, the uh, uh, 1015, yeah, I'm going back and doing that one. So 1015, truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Yes, Josh, that's exactly right. Uh, Katie and I watched Ike literally wrestle with his salvation and be saved this year. Highlight of 2020. Amen to that. That is awesome. Fantastic. Uh, my highlight of 2020 also revolved around my son, which is why I got my Cincinnati Children's shirt on this morning. I uh, just want to say thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be able to be at a place where folks knew how to help and um, didn't let the challenge get in the way of uh, what we needed. And uh, it's just, we'll forever be grateful and thankful. And... Uh, I watched my son do things I never could have imagined that anybody was strong enough to do, but uh, he knocked them out. It's beautiful stuff, and I thank God for that. So next lesson, we will start with Mark uh, 10, 17, Lord willing, and we'll go until we're finished. So again, uh, today's the 20th, uh, the 27th, no Sunday school next week, uh, January 3rd, I think it is, no Sunday school that week. Uh, we'll pick back up with the who, what, where, when, why, how of Sunday school on January 10th. And then on the 17th, we'll be back. Ha! <laughs> That's hilarious. So on uh, 117, we'll be in 1017. That works out pretty good. All right, so our homework between now and then is to pray for help in understanding Mark, to hear Mark, to think about Mark, to talk with somebody about Mark, uh, to share your insights about Mark, and then to invite a member and a non-member. Uh, all the stuff that we have uh, is 
at OurSundaySchool.com. So feel free to go there, get all the resources, uh, show other people those resources. It's helpful information. Um, and you can sign up for our email, our podcast, our YouTube, all that jazz at OurSundaySchool.com. Uh, I do want to tell you that the last Sunday of the year is usually the day that I get to give out a ton of presents. I would love to be with you to physically hand you some stuff. Uh, if you want to go and get a present uh, from me, I would love to do this. Uh, I would recommend either one of these books. This one has been uh, just absolutely messing with my head in a spectacularly good way. Uh, and this one is one that I can't wait to read uh, until... Uh, probably sometime later this week, I imagine. So this is Delighting in the Trinity uh, by Michael Reeves, R-E-E-V-E-S. And this is Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. Uh, just two fantastic ones. These would be uh, some of the books that I would have been given out if we've been in person. Uh, and then one comment from Sherry here. I'm glad Jesus hears and answers my heart cry. I believe. Help my unbelief. Amen to that. Right? How fantastic is that? All right, so I want to leave you this morning with uh, probably my favorite song from 2020, uh, and I think it works really well as a prayer. So I'm going to pray this, and then uh, we'll be finished this morning. We'll move into our prayer time, so find somebody that's not with you and pray for them. Uh, engage in a church service this morning, and then uh, remember, 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 remember the goodness of God in sending Christ so that we can see who God is, how he engages with us, and how much he cares about us uh, so that we can then be the witness that we should be. So this is Sovereign Grace Music's Christ Our Treasure. I'll pray this and then we'll be dismissed. Uh, Lord, our feet have wandered all the earth unsatisfied. Drinking from a sea of emptiness has left us dry, so we turn our eyes to Christ our treasure. There is none like you. Precious Jesus, there is none like you. Living water, word of life, you are forever true. Every blessing, joy abounding here in knowing you. So we fix our eyes on Christ, our treasure. There is none like you. Precious Jesus, there is none like you. Grace for the guilty, help for the needy. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Strength for the weary, hope for the grieving. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Healer of sickness, fountain of goodness. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Faithful provider, gracious redeemer. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Mighty in power, awesome in splendor. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Author, perfecter, keeper, sustainer. Jesus, you satisfy our souls. Christ, you are our treasure, and there is none like you. Precious Jesus, there is none like you. Grace and peace to you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I look forward to seeing you in 2021. Love you guys.